Welcome to the virtual coaching session on monitoring evaluation and control. These sessions are designed for people who have successfully completed the PMD Pro Level 1 course and passed the online examination and are now certified. Uh, it's purpose, the purpose of these sessions are to help in application uh, as much as possible. Now to start out today I'd like you to do a fun little exercise is take the words that are on the left I'm sorry the right side of the screen here and uh, then try to identify where they are on this scramble of words here. Some are left to right, some right to left, some up and down, down and up and diagonal like you'll see um, the first one here is decision on the top. So take a few minutes and do that. Here's the solution, the answer key to the word search. Um, if you were successful, uh, all of those words could be uh, located. Now I'd like to start the session today with a question. I'm going to give you a case study, a brief example, and ask you, is this a project? and why not? So I guess you can see from the way I've asked that question that it's not a project. It actually is an example that comes from Zambia, from an NGO that's working there. They call it WASH or ZWASH. It has a budget of 19 million two hundred and fifty thousand US dollars and the outcomes are to increase access to sustainable and safe water supply for poor and vulnerable communities and school children. Secondly, to increase access to improve sanitation for those same groups. Thirdly, to improve hygiene knowledge and practice for that same group. And then finally, communities empowered to facilitate sustainable wash interventions. Okay, take a few minutes and try to think through why the this is not a project. Now that you've had a few minutes I hope that you've come up with some of the things that I've got on the screen right here. First of all I think it's obvious and I hope all of you came up with the fact that it's not a project because of the size that even though the donor calls it a project you cannot successfully manage this as a single entity as a single project as I say in the fourth point here it's more likely a program um, so uh, first of all just the size and it's too complex and it probably should be broken down and would be broken down into multiple components like the ones I've identified here in red. These are probably the going to be the projects that will be managed by a different person or team of people. So you've got first access to sustainable and safe water second improved sanitation, third hygiene knowledge and practices, and then the empowerment one. So they're likely to have several sub-managers. Can you imagine trying to do a work breakdown structure on this particular uh, entity, $19 million with this level of complexity? How in the world would you be able to do that? It's just almost impossible to think about that. So the reason why uh, we're mentioning this in the monitoring evaluation and control application module is because it's really going to be necessary for you to decide what the project will be in order to be able to uh, monitor, evaluate, and control it. And so the first thing is to sort of look at that as an entity. Now remember in the PMD Pro 1 course we had the PMD Pro life cycle. I'd like you now to identify uh, the six phases of the life cycle.
Okay, hopefully you've successfully been able to do that as a review exercise and that it's you remember that the first phase is project identification and design, then project initiation, going into project planning, and this iterative cycle of planning implementation, uh, and then end of project transition, and that monitoring, evaluation, and control happens throughout all of the cycles. Um, I'd like to introduce to those of you who use the original version of the uh, PMD Pro 1 guide when you took the course to the revised module that you'll see, I mean, sorry, the revised diagram that you'll see at the bottom. And instead of calling it a life cycle, now the name is PMD Pro Phase Model. And the reason is because this section here is really a life cycle, but the rest has a beginning and an end, just like a project does. So you'll still see the same six phases, so there's nothing different about that. Uh, and you'll see the same flow, so basically there aren't very many major changes. This uh, phase here that was called project initiation in the original version is now called project setup. And the reason that that name was changed is because a lot of the international development organizations uh, actually begin implementation um, or begin initiation during project identification and design. Um, so it made more sense to say this is where you actually set up the project to get ready for implementation. And then this is not new, but the diagram has these little triangles that represent the decision gates. Some of the decision gates, there actually can be more decision gates than that. And that's to help clarify that these are control points. Now, remember the definition of the decision gate from the PMD Pro 1 that they are major control points used to conclude and accept products for a particular phase of the project and to move into the next stage. Um, and I mentioned already that decision gates are control points. They're points where you stop, you monitor, you evaluate, you reflect, and you consider making changes that will help to control the project. Now I'd like you to think about um, some of the decision gates that we talked about. There were four of them in particular that we went over in detail during the PMD Pro 1 course and that are mentioned in the guide. So I want you to take a few minutes and where you see the lines under each of the decision gates, I want you to put down the specific document or tool that is used. Okay, so which is the document or tool that's used for the initial internal decision gate? Which is the document or tool that's used for the initial external decision gate? Which is the document or tool used for funding approval and formal authorization? So take a few minutes and do that exercise now. I hope you got these correct, that the initial internal decision gate it, a document is called a concept paper. That's where you are attempting to make sure that you have alignment by preparing a, a brief overview of the idea that uh, might meet a need that is present. That then is circulated to a group of people. Um, in order to see if they're interested. And if they are interested, then they develop an expression of interest that they send back saying, yes, this idea uh, does address a need and is of interest and should be pursued. Um, and then once there's an expression of interest, then there can be a process of trying to uh, secure the funding and that's done through a project proposal and then once the proposal is awarded, um, you have the formal authorization process which takes place and is documented through what's called a project charter in the PMD Pro literature. Now I want you 
to think about what you've done in practice since the end of the PMD Pro 1 course that you attended. And I want you to be honest with me and tell me, have you been using project management tools? Um, and we'll go over what those tools are to remind you in uh, a little bit later. But I want you to give me an indication. Um, uh, first of all, give me a tick mark. If yes, I have been using PM tools since completion of the PMD, PMD Pro 1 course, or uh, a red X, no, I have not been using the PM tools. Now let's talk about what are the PMD Pro tools. Uh, this is just another general review. And remember that there are tools in all six of the phases. So I've listed the six phases on the vertical axis, the vertical column of this table here. And what I'd like you to do now is to write in as many of the tools that you can think of and try to put them into the box, into a box that matches up with the phase as closely as possible. Here's a list of some of the tools. It may not include all of them, and you may have identified some that I don't have on this list. Um, but let's just start with uh, objectives tree, um, and we have we should have problem tree somewhere down here. Um, logical framework, stakeholder matrix, Venn diagram, risk register, issues log, spider diagram, decision gates, network diagram, budget. Um, or generally called resource estimating, critical path analysis, Gantt chart, project charter, work breakdown structure, change process mapping, and RACI or RACI diagram. So I hope that this brings back some uh, recollection of what we went over in the course.